Welcome to the first. You have a story. If you look back on your life, you've done things for the first time that no one in your family, in your town, in the country has done. This is Dr. Sandy. You have unknowingly paved the way for others without knowing it or even acknowledging it. This is where you tell your story so that those who come after you can walk in your footsteps to build their own firsts. Mark Amell brought the first artificial intelligence program in the 80s to the military. Now he uses that background to offer small businesses valuable marketing and business planning expertise. He spent five years working with marketing experts to build his current platform. Mark says, I've taken the best of the best and created 30 different ways to market. And I just saw statistics that for small businesses that are struggling, 86% of them are using one or two marketing techniques, but 90% of the million dollar businesses use 10 plus different ways. Oh my goodness, get on it. You can find Mark on Facebook at mark.amel.7. On LinkedIn, he's mark-amel-dma-consulting. And his website is different, it's dmaworld.com. And his email is mark at dmaworld.com. Hey, everybody, this is the first podcast with Dr. Sandy. And today I have a great guest, Mark Amell from DMA Consulting, and we're going to hear all about Mark. Welcome, Mark. Thank you for having me. Anytime, anytime. Tell me a little bit about your business, what you do. I help small businesses grow in the marketing area and also in business planning. You know, there's too many biz, small businesses that are struggling in not knowing who to trust or where to look for answers. And I try to do that for them. And how do you do that, Mark? I've spent the last five years working with gurus, marketing gurus around the world. And I've taken the best of the best and created 30 different ways to market. And there's statistic I just saw recently that small businesses that are struggling, 86% of them are using one or two marketing techniques, but 90% of the million dollar small businesses use 10 or more so that we can set it up to do a low risk, low cost, high return way, instead of trying to go head to head with the, their competition. Oh, that's amazing. I had a marketing and analytics company as well in my past my past business, I should say. So I, I'm totally all over this because we marketed to large corporations, but you market to four small businesses. So I'm very interested. What are some of the ways that you can market that are non-traditional? Well, we do SEO. We do local SEO. We help them set up their website. We do content marketing. We do social media, social media profiles for each different type of social media is different and how you talk to the guests. So we give them scripts um, for each different platform, which per fits their personality. We can, because I'm a programmer, we've helped automate a lot of things so that they don't have to spend four hours every night trying to do their marketing and going down the YouTube rabbit hole. We give them plaf. We give them templates and teach them specifically how to do it. There's millions of small businesses in the country, and I believe small businesses are the backbone of the country. So being former former military, I'm like, I'm doing my part to help the company, the country. Nice. And and then in 10 years, when I send my retire, half the money from my marketing company is going towards my animal conservation area so I can retire in the middle of animals. Well, tell me more about that because I've not, I've not heard that you have your own conservation area. I'm building it and half of the money from this marketing company is going to get out to be able to support that. 
what kind of what kind of animals and where where is this? Well, I don't know where it's going to be yet. Um, okay. Because we have to set the budget, depends on how it goes over the next few years. I only started the marketing company in January. Okay. So we're, we're kind of still working things out, but it's heading really well. Nice. And right now, I've got four dogs that go between 85 and 130 pounds each. <laughs> That's but, <so> cool. <laughs> but in my past, I've had a 10-foot snake that didn't have a cage. She used to come up on my lap at, at night and watch TV with me. And <laughs> I also have raised in a lion that I had in my house, didn't have a cage either. She's part of the family. Where, would, where do you get a lion? Um, my little sister actually came home with this. We thought it was a baby kitten. It had a chain on. We couldn't figure out why it had a chain. But we couldn't find out where it belonged. So I just said, okay, I'll take care of it. And it kept growing. And I talked to a zookeeper and it turned out it was a New England mountain lion. So, I can't even imagine. How do you feed that thing? You feed it just meat and, you know, vegetables, things that they would get out in the wild, you know, the proper diets. No, Mark, I'm not... <laughs> I'm not into that. I'll, I'll visit your conservation when you have it behind a fence. <laughs> Make sure there's like a really big fence because I'm not into snakes, yeah. especially. My son was breeding reptiles, you know, leopard geckos, um, bearded dragons. And we had at one time we had 50. <gasps> so we had a wall full of tanks with all these. And I had one leopard gecko that, or one bearded dragon that used to like to go for car rides. So it'd sit up on my shoulder and go for car rides. You're that weird person that we look <laughs> over in traffic and we're like, this guy has a giant lizard like a crocodile on his shoulder. <laughs> Why? <laughs> that must be fun though, I could imagine. So... You've been doing this for since January with their marketing, but you said you were in the Air Force and you were on a committee. Tell me about your first that you're. Yeah, let me let me clarify that for a minute. I've um, almost six years ago, I met somebody that had a small family business and he found out that when he wanted to retire, he tried to sell it, found out it wasn't worth anything. So. I started working with business brokers and the marketing gurus around the world. I actually spent close to $70,000 working with people testing software. So even though I just released it in January, I spent five years building it. And is it a platform? Is it a platform that you have or a software? It's not a platform. It's pieces. And we teach the different pieces because... Back when I started programming in the 80s, you know, there was like seven pieces of software you needed for a business. And I created one three million line program that encompassed all of that. Wow. But nowadays, you have to interface with different pieces that are already out and tested. So that's what I'm doing because it's easier to maintain. It's easier to teach. And are you are you into AI, Mark? Well, when I started out in the military, my um, my second assignment, I brought the first artificial intelligence project to the military. So I'm an AI programmer, and we did that in the early 80s. And I've watched Google grow up, and I use my knowledge of AI to understand what they do and why they do it. And this helps me play nice with Google instead of trying to go around the corners and get banned you know or blacklisted right so I I'm very careful to play nice with Google and how many people what are you doing to market yourself how many people know about you well I'm in a, a group called Alignable it's a networking group and, I am too. okay I've got since January when I started I've up to 700 connections and I'm getting right. 150,000 views in my profile. So 
it's I'm marketing through that. I'm going to Smart Connects. I went to during Smart Connect week about six weeks ago. I went to 30 and I met 150 people. Okay. So I'm wow. telling people about that. I'm using my lead generation techniques to get to get people into my calendar and tell them about the workshop. You know, I have a high ticket too, but if people can't afford the high ticket or they're not the right people, then they can come to my workshops and I have weekly workshops and teach them how to market. And so, this workshop, is it a one-time workshop or it's ongoing? It's, um, it's ongoing every week and I'm going to cover the 30 different marketing techniques. But what I start out at is the basics. Like if you don't, if you don't know who you're talking to, you know, if you haven't defined your market, you're wasting your time and money. Um, you have to be a very specific message very, to that target audience so that you can stand out. And even myself knowing this, I have to constantly go back and say, am I, am I talking to the right person? Am I speaking to in, in their voice that they could understand? I, I do that for myself all the time. It, you have to. And what I teach is if you have your lead generations, walk through the steps because it's all micro steps. Find out where they drop out. Find, you know, send them to a landing page that, you know, I use the example if I need a roofing hammer. And if I if I send them to a hardware store with 20 different hammers, I'm not helping them. But if I send them to a landing page with three different types of roofing hammers and I explain what the difference is, then I'm helping that person. They're more likely to buy. Yes. No, that's a great analogy. And people want to just jump into spending money on ads. But until mm -hmm. you've gone through those that journey and those micro steps, it, it, you're just yeah. wasting your money. You're spending money to help, you know, come up with all that you could do for free. I totally believe in organic way before ever thinking about putting a dollar. I might do a booth once in a while if it's something really important or if I'm at a conference and I need to promote that, I might boost it for a little bit. But I'm a firm believer in organic growth like you are. I am too. But if, you know, even your boost, you know, that you do, you've already had experience with that message. So you know that that message is good. Yeah. You know, these, no, sure. these people that, you know, spend thousands of dollars because they believe ads are the only way or they get talked into it and they don't, you know, they don't end up with money and, you know, organic's great, but there is a cycle. I mean, you, you wait three months to break even, six months to peak. And if you don't touch it, it dies in nine months. Right. So you want to have somebody that I teach them how to keep their SEO and all their organic stuff current and fresh. If Google doesn't see any activity like in the profile for six months it doesn't know if you've closed or not so it starts taking away brownie points that's a great tip to give because most people don't go into their profiles and make any kind of a change the other thing that people are really surprised at is there's 50 to 70 different local search engines and there's software that you can update all of them at once and then you you update it monthly so that google even if you're a national company they look at the local seo to verify your business because you know through the ages and the reason that google took off is google's prime directive if you want to call it that is to give the best answer right so if you so have Question, question on what you just said uh, about um, local. A lot of people are, I could say even international, <clears throat> national, international today because of the internet. 
Right. So how does Google look for a local? When you say local, explain that. Local is like your brick and mortar store. Okay, so those are better for people who have a brick and mortar. No, but even if you have an international company, mm -hmm. Google is going to look at your local SEO to verify your business because Google wants to verify the information it sends out. Okay. So Google does that through your local SEO. It does it through your articles. It does it through your backlinks, all of that typical SEO stuff. But I've had companies that said, oh, well, we're, we're national and we don't need lo any local. But when I've put it in there for them, they're like, wow, it's made a difference. But you've got to look at how Google thinks, not as you would think. Right. Yes. And that's always in marketing. You're going to see from the other person's perspective, right? Exactly. Does your, your, all the 30 pieces that you have, does it have a name? Like if people wanted to look for you, do they just look for your name or is there a, a name for your platform for a better word? It's, you know, my company is DMA Consulting. But the, the platform itself is Mum Marketing, M-U-M. -M. Marketing. And that started with, I was working with a group out of the UK. And I thought of the quote, necessity is the mother of invention for small businesses. Yes. And I'm dealing with the UK, mother turned into mum. So Mum Marketing was born. Okay, I totally understand and unfortunately <laughs> understand that. So uh, now that you're the first in creating this, you know, this platform, I, I don't know what else to call it, your different pieces of marketing. What are some of the issues and challenges you've had just getting this out to the world or getting known? It's just making people aware that it exists and also trusting, you know, that I'm going to help them. They've been, you know, people, small businesses that are struggling tend to dig into what their comfort zone. Yes. So they kind of ignore it. They're, they make assumptions that marketing has to be expensive. You know, my, my workshops are 197 a month and it's, weekly training and then homework that I'll, you know, I'll get back to them on. I try to help them as much as I can. So, yeah. so at least they can be aware of what's going on. And even if they don't want me to do a high ticket later, if they hire another marketing company, they know what questions to ask. Got so it. instead of spending an hour a week going down the YouTube yeah, rabbit holes, you know, just come to class one hour a week and keep them updated. Nice. I might have to take your class to get a refresher. Your your um input would be welcome. Oh, I'd love to. I'd, I'll I'll come on. Uh, what days uh, is it? Every day, or do you have special days? It's, it's every Thursday at three o'clock Eastern time. Okay, I'm gonna look you up and see what's going on over there, Mark. So now you have all this knowledge from the Air Force to coding to marketing. How are you giving back to the next generation that's coming forward? Just, just by helping these small businesses, you know, I'm, I'm not holding back when I teach these classes. You know, I've spent all this time learning and working and I just want to share it so that other businesses can succeed. You know, there's... How do you know that you're having an impact? Have they, what have they said to you or how do you see that in fruition? Well, one of the businesses, for instance, when we were testing just SEO, they, they went from $150,000 a year business to a $350,000 a year business in a year. So that type of accomplishment. That's results. That's results. That that makes me happy. And I think the people that are coming to my work weekly workshops now, they keep coming back. So to me that, 
you know, they tell me they're learning something, but they keep coming back. So that's, that's a good thing. Yes. Yes. Very nice. Now I always, I always like return customers as you know, as the best, the best with, sales strategy. With my software, you know, package I've, I've had people back. I've had customers that started before the year 2000. So I have on the average 15 year customer retention. That's amazing. So I can't, once I get a customer, I can't seem to get rid of them. But, you, know. <laughs> you should never complain about getting rid of them. That you, you want, you have stickiness, the stickiness factor. Well, I didn't have to market for 20 years because my residual income paid my bills. And what made you decide to get back into, into marketing? When I found that customer that had to sell his business and find out it wasn't uh -huh. worth anything. Yeah. And, you know, I'm looking to semi-retire in 10 years and I'm looking at something where I can make a bigger impact. I want to help. My goal is to help a thousand small businesses in the next 10 years succeed. You can do it. So you can just through your workshops alone. If I have people like you helping, you know, talk nice about me, that would be great. I have nothing but good things to say about you, Mark. And I'm definitely coming on your workshop. So who inspires you? Or is there anyone that you, you look at and say, you know, that person did it and I could do it too. No, my, my father had his own business, you know, so I've kind of grown up with the entrepreneurial spirit, I guess. And the, the people that inspire me that want to, they want to help themselves, but they're not sure how. Okay. And I can learn, you know, we're all good at one you know, we're all good at things. And if you take what you're best at it, but surround yourself, you know, I read that the Napoleon Hill think and grow rich. And yeah. one of my favorite quotes out of that is the board took Henry Ford to try to get rid of him out of his own company. And after getting asked all these questions, he goes, look at judge, I've got a board with switches across my desk. If I need answers to any of those silly questions, I just flip the right switch and I give them the answer. <laughs> and the judge dismissed the case. So, you know, that. Oh my gosh, that's funny. It's just surrounding yourself with better people in different areas, right? Yes. And one of my passion and one of the things I do is I help small businesses form their advisory boards. Yeah, and that's, that's important. That's a great way for especially small business owners to surround themselves with the right team that can help them. And the great thing about, about a board is you can switch people out as you need. You know, you have an expertise. I had an advisory board and I, I can't say enough about how much they helped me even to grow my business and to sell my business. And that's, you know, I'm like the guy that, you know, who inspired you to do this. I, I had a great outcome from selling my business and having those people help me. And there's, I've met business brokers and, you know, a lot of people, and I hope we continue to converse, you know, and share ideas, but the, it's, you know, it's not too late. You want to start. I'm a big time planner, so I can tell you what I'm doing next year this time. But you want to have a plan for your retirement plan and how it's yeah. going to, how everything you do every day works towards that end goal and not waste your efforts on stuff. Well, we built our business to sell. We knew in our operating agreement, this is how we were going to get the money back. Because we, my business partner and I worked in corporate for years. Okay. And after 9-11, we started our company and we decided we don't have all the things that big corporate would give to us, even at the time, a health plan, right? Healthcare plan. Right. And so we have to grow this business to a certain level. 
And we sat with our financial advisors and knew how much we needed to get each to get out of the business. And once we got to that level, we took a look. We, we weren't prepared to sell at the moment, but it came up and we took the opportunity. And I'm glad we did. And I'm now, you know, I can do what I, I like and what I'm passionate about. So yeah, I'm I'm a big advocate of starting from scratch and thinking things through and putting together a plan. I'm that person, Mark. Yeah, that's good. I did all the operations on, on, in our company, so I'm the standards and procedures and the system you're looking at right now. But that's important, you know. And even if you have a small two-person business you still need to know where you're headed. Yes. And it's even more important, I would say, when it's only two people, because if one person's out, you need to know what that person's doing. You don't have like a big support team. So I'm a great fan of recording things on, on Loom or on Vimeo or, you know, I have my assistant try to update. That's the part I, I fall down on is the updating. I should do it more often because the minute he's out and I go back to look at that video, I'm like, oh, we didn't do the latest, you know, we had a late, a late thing that we had to put in, but at least it helps. I could get 90% of the way until he comes back, you know? We had, when I got out of the Air Force, we had those software, like they would have five people in the office. They each did one type of different softwares. So if that person that knew how to ran that software was out of the office for a week vacation, they were. Oh my gosh, yeah. nothing got done. Yeah. Nothing got done. <laughs> so with my software, I came in and all the screens work essentially the same. So they could get away with, you know, having a person missing or even letting a person go and bringing in somebody. Yeah. new. Yes. And that's the thing. When someone leaves, whether voluntarily or involuntarily, you just shake your head. You're like, oh my God, what is <laughs> what is this mess that's here? I think that's why banks let people go on vacation like mandatorily so they could see what, what the mess is. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but thank you. Thank you for this information, Mark. And where can people reach you? I want you to send in your your social handles and stuff for our intro and outro, but where can someone reach you if they need to after this? They can go to, well, the the free workshop is at 30waystomarket.com. Okay. They can reach me at dmaworld.com or email me at mark at dmaworld.com. Okay. Great. Thank you, Mark. This was really good. And I know so many people, marketing is number one. Marketing trump sales, as far as I'm concerned. Because no, marketing I'm... could be your sales, right? If you do it right, it does the sales for you. No, I, I agree. Totally. But thank you for having me. You're more than welcome. This is Dr. Sandy. Thank you so much for sharing your journey on the first, where no two stories are alike, even if the circumstances are similar. Let this discussion serve as inspiration for others to show what's possible, and more importantly, to produce seconds and thirds.